Hi guys, uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today's uh, video, this video specifically is for errors in suspense and one of the, uh, this is basically one of the questions uh, from the past papers and it's from May June 2021, basically question number five. This is paper two variant three, uh, obviously for both O-level and IGCSE accounting. And uh, here this question basically tells you that Kia is a trader. The totals of the trial balance prepared on 30th April did not agree and the difference was placed in a suspense account. Kia later discovered the errors shown in the table in part A. So basically they are asking you to calculate, basically first correct each error that Kia has made. The first one has been completed as an example. So they are here, The basically the first uh, error here is uh, cash drawings 200 had been omitted from the drawings account. So basically they had put it in the cash account or the bank account, but they did not put it in the drawings account. So you need to, drawings is always debited. So to, to record drawings, you debit the drawings, but you don't have anything to credit. So you write a uh, suspense on the credit side. Uh, in the next area, you're saying a petty cash book payment 31 to a, bell, a, a supplier had been recorded in the column for office expenses. So if you know petty cash book, there are analysis columns and there's one column for, let's say for office expenses, there's one column for ledger accounts in which you basically record payments to, to payments to suppliers. So in here, in this case, this, they did not record it in the uh, payments to supplier column. They recorded it in the uh, office expenses um, column, which means office expenses account is, is understated by 31. So you need to credit office expenses here by 31 and you need to deb debit a bell by 31 because a bell is the one you're paying, right? So if you pay your liability, basically if you pay your trade payable, that is a bell in this case. So the amount that you owe to a bell now reduces and your liability towards a bell reduces. So you need to debit a bell's account whenever you are paying a bell. Uh, then they are saying, Sales returns 105 uh, had been correctly entered in the customer's account but had been credited to the purchase returns account. So basically what is the normal double entry for sales returns? Normal double entry for sales returns is sales returns debit and you credit the customer's account. So that means customer's account has been correctly credited so you, you don't need to uh, do anything to the customer's account. What you need to do here is that you need to remove it from the purchases returns account. So you debit purchases returns here because purchases returns was wrongly credited. So uh, you debit it by 105 and you need to debit sales returns because whenever you, whenever your customer returns you goods, goods sales re returns account is debited and the customer's account is credited. So you write here 105 and now you don't have anything to credit. So you write here suspense and you need to write here 210 by, uh, credit suspense by 210. And then there is, uh, they, here they are saying, a payment for motor expenses, $72, had been recorded in the motor expenses account as $172. So they basically have overstated an expense by $100. So if they overstate an expense, that means they debited the expense account by hundred dollars more so what you know, need to do here is that you need to credit the motor expenses account by and you need to write here hundred and then this basically needs to be uh, debited in suspense because you don't need uh, you don't have anything to debit here so you debit suspense by hundred and then they are saying a purchase invoice 102 from Abel had been debited to Abel's account and credited to purchase's account, which is a completely reverse entry. What you need to do whenever you purchase goods on credit from someone, you debit the purchase account and credit the person's account. So what you need to do here is that you need to double the amounts in case of complete reversal. You basically double the amounts and, and make the correct double entry. So what you do here is that you write here purchases debit by 204 and a bell credit by 204. So in the second part of the same question, they are asking you to make the suspense account in which they haven't given you the original difference in trial balance, but you need to. So basically you need to record these entries in the suspense account. So in the first entry, they are debiting the drawings and crediting suspense here. So what you do here is that you leave one line for the original difference in trial balance and you write, write here drawings and then you write here 200. So suspense is being credited credited in the first entry. In the second entry, suspense is not there, so you don't need to record it. In the third entry, suspense is being credited by 210. So what you do here is that you write here purchases returns 
and sales returns i am writing short forms but you guys cannot write short forms in the exam it's not allowed it's not basically nice that you write short forms so 210 uh, you write it on the credit side and in the third entry basically motor expenses is being credited suspense is being debited by 100 so you write here motor expenses and you write here 100 so if you look here in the in the last entry there is no suspense so you don't no need to record that if you uh, so this will this is obviously not balancing the credit side is 410 the debit side is 100 so what you do here is that you write here difference in trial balance and you write here 310 and then you basically um, balance this account at 410 and that's it in the next part they are saying the amount for abel and kia's books showed that Ab kia owed him uh 327 so abel uh has we've established this as well before that abel is our abel is our credit supplier and because before these errors before the correction of these errors kia owed him 327 and then the errors were corrected so now you basically revise the amount that we owe to abel so basically when uh when you make this account you write a balance brought down of 327 on the credit side and that is what uh, we owe Abel on the first date before the correction of the errors. And then uh, wherever Abel is, so Abel is being debited in the second entry. So what you do is that you record that in the in Abel's account on the debit side, you write here office expenses. Um, basically office expenses is credited against it. You write here 31. And then um, if you uh, look at the last entry, Abel is being credited by 204. So what you do here is that you write here purchases and you write here 204. So we had purchased goods of 102, but we incorrectly recorded it in on the debit side of Abel's account. So basically we had to double the amount and credit it in Abel's account. So what you uh, take out is your balance carried down and that will be 500. So 327 plus 204 minus 31 is 500 i did this question in account form you can do it without an account as well uh, that's not an issue in the next part they're saying kia has recorded the purchase of calculator of a calculator five dollars as an office expense state three reasons why kia did not record this as a non-current asset a calculator of course is 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 an item which can uh, which can benefit the business for years and years but kia did not record it as a non-current asset one because of materiality materiality concept says that items which are of low value should not be recorded as non-current assets because they don't uh, they are basically uh, better off recorded as expenses because these items are so immaterial so insignificant the amount is so insignificant so the amount is insignificant and hence you don't need to basically record it as a non-current asset and if you even if you record a non it recorded record this as non-current asset it's like an has like a hassle basically you'll not be able to provide depreciation on it so uh, you basically write it off as an expense the amount is insignificant materiality is the concept that is being applied here and you can't basically apply depreciation on it so you can't uh, the business can't apply depreciation on it that would be too much cost so hence you don't record it as your, as your non-current asset you record it as your um, as your expense so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching